Well, hello, everyone. Sorry for the rough start. Uh, we're a little rusty here. And um, I think it's been six months since we did our last free BSD Fridays. But welcome back. Um, we're so happy to have you here. And we're so happy to restart this, this series. I'm Deb Goodkin, and I'm the executive director of the FreeBSD Foundation, and I'm proud to be sponsoring and producing these, uh, these talks. So last year, we did 15 uh, introductory FreeBSD talks, and they were all recorded. And we'll post the, the link to those recordings here in the IRC channel. Now, during the talk today, if you have a question, please post it in the IRC channel and proceed it with a queue so we know it's a question. So one thing before we start the talk, I wanna let everyone know that there's gonna be a virtual developer summit next week. And it's Wednesday through Thursday, I'm sorry, Wednesday through Friday at half days starting, uh, I believe 7.30 a.m. Pacific time, but we'll also post the link to, to that so you can get accurate information and hopefully register. Uh, we already have a lot of folks registered. So join everyone else. It'll be interesting uh, as well as fun and we'll have some activities and it'll be a great way for folks from the community to connect again. So today our talk is an introduction to Bastille BSD by Krister Edwards. So let me tell you a little bit about him. So Krister is a lifelong tinkerer. He would tell you that he likes to build cool things. You may know him from being FreeBSD's salt stack maintainer for the past 10 years, or maybe as the architect of Hubble Stack, which monitors hundreds of thousands of systems around the world for security compliance. More recently, he has combined the automation principles of salt stack with the security concepts of Hubble Stack and merge them into a lightweight, secure container manager, Bastille BSD. He currently resides in Utah with his wife and son, where he enjoys bird watching and exploring the vast mountain deserts in his converted camper van. But now I'll hand it off to Krister. Thanks, Deb. <clears throat> I'm excited to be here today. Let me do a screen share here and pull up my presentation. Okay, I assume everybody can see this okay. <clears throat> we'll dive into this introduction. I want to give a little bit of a background on the project um, and uh, some of the, the reasons that I was inspired to build this, um, as well as give a demo of some of the functionality uh, and um, kind of just demonstrate what it's able to do and how you can manage lightweight containers on FreeBSD. So let's see, there's a couple of links and resources here on this page. This link or this, this slide will actually be repeated at the very end. So don't worry about grabbing all these links right now. This will be up at the end for you to also uh, pull these down. Um, really quickly, I wanna share a history lesson. And uh, this is, I suppose, I suppose you might say the, this is the etymology of the project name. Um, it's named after the Bastille, which was a prison fortress in France for nearly 400 years. It sounds like it was a terrible place. Um, I wouldn't want to be there. Um, but it was finally destroyed in 1789 as part of the French Revolution. And the main, kison, the main prison key was actually shipped to George Washington and uh, still hangs in a museum in upstate New York. Uh, <clears throat> but this is what it's named after. A large prison complex seemed like uh, a reasonable name for a jail manager on FreeBSD. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. A brief history of containers. A lot of you might have seen this tweet or have seen this kind of uh, image before. Um, I will say, I guess, really quickly that I kind of will interchangeably use the word containers and jails. Jails is the technology that we're using for these containers, but it seems like the industry has standardized on the phrase container. And so that's generally what I try to use um, when I uh, talk about this, this tool. <clears throat> so as you can see here, if you go way back in time, feels like 100 years ago, uh, BSD had jails back in the year 2000. That's about 21 years ago at this point, 
jails could in the US, jails could buy you a beer. It's old enough to do that. <laughs> All the other containerization tools have come since then. Um, some of them have some really great features and functionality. Um, I've used most of them, maybe not all of them, but I'm sure a lot of you have seen or worked with maybe Linux vServer or Solaris Zones. I used to hear a lot more about. Um, OpenVZ had some, some cool ideas, I think. Um, LXC, System D, Spawn, Docker, of course. Um, <clears throat> we're all familiar with at this point. And then I, if I would extend this list, I think I would probably put Kubernetes on there, right? That's kind of everything we hear about online anymore. Um, but basically I share this to point out that FreeBSD has been doing containers and jails for pretty much longer than everyone else. I think they do a fantastic job of it. And for me, BSD jails has been the killer feature on this operating system uh, that always keeps me coming back. I cannot find this same level of lightweight kind of system virtualization on any other platform. And I really, really like how FreeBSD does it, which is part of the reason I decided to build a container platform using this technology, because I think it's just simply unmatched for the most part. <clears throat> if you're not familiar with, with jails or these containered processes, think of it just like simply like a one-way mirror. From outside the container, you can see in, but from inside the container, you can't see out. So we can see you, you can't see us. <clears throat> the current version of Bastille is 0 0.8, 2021, 0.115. So we had a release early this year in January and we have a pending release, which this is a good enough time as any to announce. We will have a new release on Bastille Day, which is July 14th. Um, <clears throat> we've got some cool updates in that version and I'll demonstrate a few of the a few of the fixes and improvements in this presentation that you may not have seen and will be available in the next release. So if you want to get started with Bastille, it's very easy. You can just package install Bastille. The package size is less than 200K and there are zero dependencies. This is all by design. I wanted this to be as lightweight and to reuse as much existing code and tools and everything that we could without pulling in lots of other stuff, other dependencies, language dependencies, libraries, any of that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> it's very small, it has no dependencies. And based on those design decisions, I'm able to run Bastille and create a number of containers and manage them on everything from uh, cloud instances to data center hardware to all the way down to a Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm really excited about the fact that I can do containers on a Raspberry Pi. And again, that's uh, part of the design is to keep it simple and make sure it works everywhere and does not require uh, certain dependencies that may not be available on certain platforms or certain places. <clears throat> Once you've installed Bastille, you might want to look at the config file. It should mostly work just out of the box. But if you want to customize anything, like perhaps you want to change what archives it pulls down, maybe you want to include uh, the source code or the ports or you know lib32 or some other kind of uh, archives into the base, you can do that. You can customize the default time zones for all your containers. Um, set the resolver. If you want to use ZFS, which I know a lot of people do, and ZFS is fantastic, um, but Bastille does not require ZFS, but it does support ZFS. So if you, if you want to use that, you just need to turn it on in the config. I would love to have it magically default just work, but I don't know what zpool you want to use. I'm going to leave that to you. You need to populate that, um, and, and then everything will be ZFS after that. Um, default network settings, et cetera. These will all be in the config file. <clears throat> Let's see, here's a, a quick overview of the usage. I know the text is a little bit small to try to get it to all fit um, on the screen, but this gives you a quick idea of all of the different commands you can use within Bastille to interact with your containers. 
Um, you can run arbitrary commands. You can change configuration options, console into them, convert containers between different types, copy files, create and destroy, start, stop, restart, manage services, manage packages, uh, set resource limits. As you can see, it's quite a long list. There's a lot of stuff that you can do. And I would recommend that you uh, experiment with it a little bit, create some containers and try out and see what these different commands do. And I will demonstrate quite a few of them, but we won't, we don't have time to get to all of them um, in this presentation. But from here, I wanna start kind of at the beginning. Um, I've got a new machine and I've done a package install Bastille. What do I do next? How do I actually build containers? Well, the first thing you need to, need to do is to bootstrap a release. Bootstrapping a release is generally just done once or it's done each time a new BSD release is put out. But let's say I want to build containers on FreeBSD 13. I would use this Bastille bootstrap 13.0 release and it would bootstrap that release and make it available to build containers on. As you can see from the slide there, there's an optional command at the end. I can put update and that will execute FreeBSD update on the bootstrap release and make sure that it has the latest patch set, patch set. And then additionally, the verify command will use a FreeBSD update verify and try to make sure that the release at least mostly looks like it's supposed to, there aren't any surprises. Um, and uh, additionally, the bootstrap method also does um, uh, hash comparisons on the archives from the manifest file and make sure that the, ar the archive we have is the one we expect. And there's some more validation in there. But <clears throat> in general, again, bootstrap is just, you just use it once to pull down a release, or you can use it again to fetch and verify automation templates. And I'll talk a little bit more about the automation templates um, further on in the presentation. But once you've done the bootstrap, you're about ready to go and you can build containers. Um, <clears throat> a quick note about networking options. When, when you first create a container, you do need to assign it an IP address. So you need to have some understanding of what your networking looks like and what networking you want to use for these containers. Now, in that regard, Bastille supports uh, three primary types of networking for the containers. The first option is uh, using a loopback, a cloned loopback interface, which we generally rename to Bastille Zero, and then assign the containers addresses on that interface and allow traffic in and out through the firewall. Um, I, I like this method and I primarily use this loopback method anytime that I'm uh, creating containers in the cloud. A lot of times uh, the networking on a cloud instance only provides you with one IP address. Uh, so creating a loopback interface and creating a private network inside of that system allows me to easily create as many containers as I need without interfering with whatever networking limitations or assignments I have um, in a cloud network. Uh, secondly, an option is to just do an IP alias on an existing interface. So if you have a, I don't know, an EM0 interface on your machine, you can basically add, keep adding IPs to that interface and they'll just show up kind of, assuming those IPs are the same network as your host, they'll just keep showing up as new hosts on your network. If you wanna be a little bit more uh, robust about it and do um, sometimes much more complex things with your network, um, things with routing and VLANs and all kinds of stuff. We also support VNet. Uh, VNet is uh, pretty cool. Um, it's uh, only been supported in base without uh, a recompile um, only, I suppose, recently, maybe the last couple of years or so. Um, but the VNet system will create a bridge and then attach the containers to that bridge, which acts kind of like a virtual switch. Um, these second two networking options, the IP alias and the VNet option are generally what I use in my home lab. 
or in a data center or somewhere where I, I have control of all the networking. I have maybe a, a whole pool of IP addresses that I can use and assign and I, I have ownership of them and I, you know, um, VNet is, is uh, pretty nice. I have to admit more and more of my containers at home are being built with VNet anymore. Um, I'm pretty impressed with, with what you can do with the VNet. Um, I'll have a link towards the end where you can go find more information on Bastille networking. What are the requirements for each of these three types of things and how do you set them up? Uh, but I bring this up again because before we can create anything, we have to know how are we going to do the network? Um, <clears throat> and these are requirements there. So jumping forward to creating containers. The basic syntax is Bastille create. You need to give it a name. You need to give it the release that you want it to use. And you give it an IP address. So in this simple example, I'm just creating three containers named after um, generally well-known prisons. Um, either in real life or popular culture. That's generally how I do the documentation. Um, I specify the release I want to use, as you can see, and then I give them each a unique IP address. In this example, these machines would be using the loopback Bastille Zero interface. Um, and us, these addresses would be assigned to that interface. The addresses would be added when the machine, when the containers are started and the IPs will be removed when the containers are stopped. <clears throat> Behind the scenes, when you create a container, it will create this path. Everything that you set up with Bastille will be under user local Bastille. And then any jails that you create will have their own directory by their name. It creates a jail config for each jail that's located within that jails um, directory an FS tab to define what should be mounted into that jail, and then a root uh, directory where all of the jail, where the jail will write all of its files, install packages, and generally um, manipulate what's inside of that container. Um, <clears throat> just as a quick note, if I do, a, if I create a default container using Bastille without any kind of fancy options or anything, the brand new fresh container will only take up less than 10 more megabytes of disk space for each new container. So you can create a lot of these without using a lot of disk. Um, of course, once you start manipulating those containers and installing things and running, you know, running services from them, they will get bigger naturally. Uh, but by default and just out of the box, a fresh new container will be very, very small, very, very small. Um, Bastille supports actually two types of, um, well, as far as the disk space goes, two types of jails. You may have heard the terms before about thin jails or thick jails, and this is these concepts carry over and are also applied in Bastille. Um, the thin jails I sometimes will refer to as like a shared release jail. Um, a thin jail will share a bootstrapped release. So if you bootstrapped FreeBSD 13, that is now available to be used to create these new jails. And when you create them, these shared release or thin jails will all share that release. There's some benefits to this in terms of uh, security and patching. Let's say I had, I don't know, 25 different containers and they were all sharing this release, I could patch all 25 of them with one command by just patching the shared release that they use. And then that patch is auto automatically propagated to all of them because they're sharing that, that, that release. In this case, these releases or these jails also mount that base file system in a read-only manner. So the core of the system, bin and sbin and lib and the, the places where you know the core libraries and the core pieces are uh, presented are read only. But there are read write paths within the container where you can install packages and still do basic configuration and so on. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
I, I generally recommend thin jails or these shared release jails for containers that you expect to be kind of short-lived. Um, and by short-lived, I don't mean like, I'm only gonna have it for a day. Um, by short-lived, I mean, I don't expect this container to live longer than this FreeBSD release. Like I don't plan to upgrade this to 14 someday. If it's just gonna stay on the same release and you don't ever need to upgrade it, a thin jail I think works pretty well. On the other side, we have the quote, thick jails or a cloned release is sometimes how I'll refer to them. In this case, we bootstrap a release like 13. And then when I create a jail and I tell it, I want you to be this cloned release style, it will just make a copy of that release into the jail. So this jail will be larger than a thin jail, um, <clears throat> but these have full control and are uniquely uh, controlling everything about themselves. They don't share a release with any other jails. If that jail needs to be upgraded, you can upgrade that jail and it doesn't interact with or affect any of the other containers. Um, and in this case, the full base is mounted read-write. Um, this type I recommend if you think, you know, I'm creating this and yeah, I'm probably gonna have this around for a while. It's gonna be on 13, it's gonna be on 14 and so on. I would say a thick jail or a cloned release jail would be a good method in, in that area. <clears throat> now, if you've created a thin one and you realize, you know what, I thought I was only gonna have this for a while, but in reality, it looks like it's gonna be here to stay. Maybe I need to convert it. Um, <clears throat> you can convert a thin jail to a thick jail with Bastille convert, and it will just change it. Um, if, you, if you had a thin jail and the new release comes out and you think, hey, I gotta upgrade this, I would recommend that you convert it first and then do an upgrade. Okay, <clears throat> moving on from there. Once you have some, once you have releases bootstrapped and you've created a few containers, one of the unique things uh, that I think Bastille brings that I haven't seen in in many of the other jail managers that I've tried, and believe me, I've tried <laughs> a lot of them, um, is this concept of targets and to be able to interact with your containers from the outside without necessarily having to go in the container to do your maintenance. So most of the documentation will refer to a target after it talks about a command. And there's also a built-in target of all. I can target all of my containers and um, have something apply to all of them. Um, <clears throat> now, from that point, I can start to use these subcommands and interact with the containers I've built. Or in this example, like you can see, I can target them individually, or I can just say, stop all or restart all. And it will find a list of all of them and affect that to all of them. <clears throat> and this, the targeting applies pretty much to all of the subcommands. Um, there's, when you, if you get uh, really into the weeds about some of the subcommands, most of them target containers. Some of them target releases. So there might be a slight distinction between, you know, I would run this and target a release versus a container. Uh, but for the most part, everything targets a container and you can interact with it that way from the outside. <clears throat> uh, Bastille list will, of course, list your jails. You can also use it to list the releases that you have bootstrapped, any templates that you have pulled down, um, any logs. There's a, if you do a Bastille list help, it will actually show you quite a list of, um, of all the options that it supports. <clears throat> um, and, excuse me, <clears throat> uh, this is one of the areas that we've been improving on that will be available in this next release. Um, we've made an update to the list command, which I will demo here fairly soon. Um, and I think a lot of you will be pretty pleased with uh, the improvements. <clears throat> okay, I wanna do a quick demo here um, on 
patching the jails. So I've created, let's see if I can switch over to this. Hopefully, um, hopefully that screen shares, sharing the new screen of my console here. Um, <clears throat> but what I can do, let me see. Oops. Let me start them all first, right? Let me run that again. So the, the CMD or the command submodule lets us execute arbitrary commands inside the containers and it reports back what that was. So we can see here that I've got three containers. I built two of them with 13 and one of them with 12. Now, if I run Bastille update on that release, this uses a um, FreeBSD update utility to try to update that bootstrapped release where I have uh, those base files uh, extracted. Once this finishes, and you'll, uh, you'll have to pardon the speed on here. This is on a Raspberry Pi 4 and SSD uh, or a micro SD disk writes are a little bit slow, of course. But if I run, execute this again now after running the update, these two have been updated to dash P2, whereas before they were just on the base release. I could do the same for the 12.2. Um, oh, of course that one doesn't want to update because, well, both because it's ARM, uh, or I think primarily because it's ARM and, and ARM wasn't primarily supported in uh, until 13. Uh, but you get the idea there. I can check the version by running FreeBSD version inside the container. I can update the base that applies to all of them. I can run it again and I can see that that is reflected. Um, one thing that I want to point out or kind of give a tip um, I, I noticed that sometimes people will run uname inside the container and say, oh, well, this version doesn't look like what I thought it's supposed to look like. Well, the uname command will actually pull the data from the host kernel and not from the jail. So it's not an accurate way to determine what version the container has, um, but it's a fine way to determine what your host has, if that's what you're after. Um, I would recommend running FreeBSD version to determine what version is available in the container, if that's what you're looking for. <clears throat> uh, here's a short list of some of the other uh, example subcommands. Um, we saw CMD, of course, in that last one, um, but I could use this example. I'll do that to all, and let's just run this. This will run, this is running the PS command inside of each container and then reporting back to me what is actually running inside of those containers. As you can see, a uh, default container with nothing else really configured in there is very lightweight and just the basic bare essentials are running in it. Uh, syslog is still running. I haven't stripped out the logging capabilities because why would I do that? Um, and cron is still running so you can still schedule your jobs in these containers but other than that nothing is going on and these are very lightweight they're not adding much of anything um, to to like the host system overhead or the load or you know it's just we're running syslog three more times and we're running cron three more times right it's just another process but these processes can't see out we can see in um, <clears throat> Bastille CP uh, is just a simple copy command. You can give it a path to a file from the host and give it the relative path inside the container that you want it to be, and it will copy those files in. Um, the, the CP command is used quite a, bit, quite a bit in the templating, which again, we'll get to here shortly, uh, for copying in directory overlays and config files and whatever kind of customized things you want to put in your containers in an automated way. Um, we have integration with 
the package command. Let me do this. I'm telling all of my containers to run a package audit and I'm forcing a download of the latest vulnerability database to make sure that they have it. But this tells me no problems found, no problems found, no problems found. Now, of course, as this, uh, as I use these systems more and more and I install packages in these containers, occasionally, sometimes these will report errors. But I really like that I can just run this and get a very quick and easy overview of all of my containers and see if any of them um, are, uh, are in including any vulnerable, known vulnerable packages. Um, <clears throat> The sysrc and the service commands, if you're familiar with those two tools, um, those obviously will toggle rcconf entries and enable and disable services and set flags and whatever you want it to do. And the service command, of course, starting and stopping services. Now, again, as you can see from here, I'm sending these commands into the jails or I'm enabling things that are inside the jails or starting services in the jails but I'm not actually going into the jail to do all of this. I don't have to console in and then run these commands. I can just basically issue these orders to the containers in real time and have them report what's going on. Um, <clears throat> I realize I have this slide in here, but I also just demonstrated what was running. Um, this at the bottom, I suppose it's helpful. This outlines um, what was changed from the default setting. So by default, we simply disable the socket connections for syslog. It doesn't need to listen on any ports unless you want it to. Um, we turn the send mail stuff off and we set a 60 second jitter for any of the cron entries so that all of your containers don't all run their cron jobs all at the same time. <clears throat> but of course, you're welcome to override any of these. Uh, you can use the template system or just any of the normal subcommands to change those values, update them, and configure whatever you like. But by default, we try to kind of trim it down and simplify it and just these are the base, generally the base changes. <clears throat> now, if you do want to console into the container and treat it like a standard machine where you have a shell and you're running your commands, you can also do Bastille console and give it a target. Um, optionally, you can specify the user you want to console in as. By default, the root user is the only created user. So by default, if you don't specify, it will just log you in as root. It's a passwordless login, so you don't need any. It lets you in. You're ready to go. If you have root on the host, you have root on these jails. I'm not going to. There's not a lot I could do from there. Um, but if you know you want to log in as a specific user and that user exists, you can console in directly as a specific user. <clears throat> now, uh, the templates. This is the one of the uh, unique and exciting things that I really like about Bastille. And this is where I've integrated my, my decade of of background with salt stack automation and configuration management into this container manager. So <clears throat> as I mentioned before, you can bootstrap a URL to a template. Um, right now we have, uh, our templates are a little bit spread out. Um, we have primarily they're on GitLab and they started on GitLab because we wanted to use the CI CD integrations that GitLab has to test the templates and make sure that they work properly and so on. Um, they are usually replicated on GitHub as well, uh, but I think uh, the GitLab stuff is probably a little more up to date. Um, uh, we would like to clean this up and standardize a little bit more, um, but as I'm sure all of you know, right, we have day jobs and we don't always have time to get to the things that we um, want to get to. But <clears throat> let me demonstrate the usage of a template on these containers that I have. So I've cloned a few templates just for uh, example, example's sake. 
um, an nginx template and a syslog ng template. <clears throat> I'm going to apply these to a couple of these machines and you can see how the automation works. Um, <clears throat> to just give you an idea, oops. I can run Bastille Verify on a template path and it will tell me what that template is going to do. Generally, when you bootstrap it, it will bootstrap and get a copy of that template and then automatically run the verify. So it gives you an idea of what it's gonna run before you actually run it. But in this case, <clears throat> I think it's fairly simple and hopefully it's, uh, hopefully it's all very human readable and you can just look at this and say, oh yeah, I see what that's trying to do, right? Package, install this. Copy uh, from this path into this path in the container. Um, uh, there's a directory in this template called USR, which has files in it and config files and stuff. And this is just saying, copy that whole directory and everything underneath it into the container. It kind of acts like a file overlay with whatever custom files you wanna put in. I want to disable this one and I want to enable this one, and then I'm gonna stop it and start it. So if I do, oops, let's say, what do we have again? Okay, I'm gonna apply this to Alcatraz. Okay, applying template, it's gonna read through that template information and it says, okay, I'm gonna install syslog ng. It needs all of these dependencies. Let me pull them all in. Um, and again, hopefully this doesn't take too long writing all these files to the micro SD on a Raspberry Pi, but we'll have to give it a minute to do that. But essentially, as you saw from the template syntax, it's just gonna automate doing all of these things. And so ideally, by the time it's done, it has installed all the packages. It has overlaid all the configuration the way that you want it. It's enabled the services and it started the services and the container is ready to go. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have uh, quite a few templates that we've put together. Um, we're always looking for more and we're definitely open for contribution and submissions of new templates. If you use a tool a lot uh, and we don't have a template for it, we'd be very happy to talk with you about how can we set up a template for this to make uh, configuration and deployment of common containers really easy for everybody, right? If I have a template for something, I may not necessarily need to know exactly how asterisk works. I can just apply the asterisk template and they have a basic phone system, right? Um, so I think there's a lot of, a lot of potential there and um, we'd really like to extend out the templates we have with more. <clears throat> um, and actually, while I'm waiting for this one, this would be a good time to talk a little bit about uh, some of the roadmap ideas we have for the templates. Um, if you've looked them up on Git, GitHub or GitLab, you'll see that there's a new repository for each template. Right now, they're all done individually um, and we manage them kind of separately that way. Um, but uh, the more and more we use it and after more discussion, we would really like to consolidate them all into something that looks a lot more like the ports tree. So I can just clone one thing and I have all the templates for everything I might need I just apply the ones that I want, but it would all be centralized. Um, again, uh, looking a lot more like the ports tree where I just go into, you know, www nginx and I have uh, the nginx templates or the, you know, whatever it might be. So we're still working on that um, and we'd like to <clears throat> get that done, well, uh, sooner than later, but in our spare time, of course. Um, uh, but in the future, hopefully you'll just be able to pull down the templates and it will have all of the templates you need uh, versus just uh, one off and one at a time. Um, <clears throat> okay, this is just about finished, 97, 98, 99. 
um, there will be a few more to extract. Uh, again, I recognize it's a little bit slow on a Raspberry Pi, but I wanted to show you like actual proof that this runs on a Raspberry Pi. Um, <clears throat> okay, let me jump back to this while that's going. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about the templates and, and we'll see how that continues to apply. Um, in the template file syntax, uh, you should be able to use just about any of the subcommands. The only exceptions to this, again, are the few subcommands that don't target containers, but target a release. Like I wouldn't use a bootstrap in a template command because that's not really right. The bootstrap doesn't, doesn't apply to the containers, it applies to the releases. Um, the other thing you might notice from that verify output that I did is that the Bastille templates, I did, we don't use YAML or JSON or TOML or any of, a, any of these other kind of markup languages. Um, perhaps this is uh, me getting a little bit tired of being a YAML programmer, um, but best, the Bastille file syntax just uses real commands, package names, sysrc entries, there's no more language specific syntax errors like my YAML isn't indented properly or my JSON has too many commas or whatever. <laughs> I just didn't want to deal with that. So um, it's weird to say, but it's 2021 and Bastille has a full automation suite and there's no YAML to be found, which given the state of computing these days, uh, just seems very foreign. And what do you mean there's no YAML? How do you configure anything? Well, you know, just a normal way. Um, so anyhow, we can see as it, ex as it executed these commands, we see all the output. All of this happened inside the container, but we get the output from it here. Um, this is the copy overlay from the CP command. Copy everything in here. So this is primarily just a syslog ng config file. Disable that service, enable this service, stop that one, start this one. So if I run this again now, we ran this earlier and all it showed us was cron and syslog D, but now it shows us cron and syslog ng and it's running and everything's working. Perfect. I didn't even have to do anything and I have a syslog ng container up and running and ready to accept logs from the other machines in my systems. <clears throat> uh, I mentioned this link before. You can pull that up and look at some of the templates that we've created. Again, we have quite a few, but we'd love to see more. If you have any software that you'd like to help us automate, we would be very happy to look at it and help you uh, create templates and integrate them into our template collection. Uh, this is an example of a Bastille file. We saw this in the console output before, right? The packages it wants to install, the, co the file copies it wants to do, the enables or disables and so on and so on. All, the, all of the Bastille files will look, of course, a little bit different. Um, they'll be installing different packages and enabling different things. But overall, the syntax will look generally like this, right? I'm installing things, I'm enabling things, I'm turning them on. Um, that's kind of the core, right? Those are the kind of the core steps for setting up any software. And we've automated as much of that as we can. Um, I don't have an example for it for this presentation, but I do have a link that I will share that has more detailed information on the templates and how you can use them and also how you can incorporate uh, variables into your templates. Uh, the variables get very useful when you want to be able to uh, control what version you're wanting to install or to use um, like variables in your config files that you want that you want Bastille to render into a defined variable name or a value. Um, again, that starting to get a little bit complex into the stuff that it can do, but there's a link here again that I can share you at, at the Bastille blog that will outline how you can do that. Let me talk a little bit about the roadmap and what we're continuing to work on. Um, 
the more that I use Bastille and the more that I use these containers to do development, the more that I've recognized this is a this is a fantastic way to do rapid testing and development on software. I can create a container, I can use a template to automate the whole thing, I can test my code, I can tear it down all in no, you know, almost no amount of time. What I would really like to do is have some integration, or maybe something built in or something that can tie into uh, perhaps existing CI CD platforms and do basic CI CD using Bastille containers um, to rapidly test and develop software. Um, this next one I've touched on a little bit. We want to mature the templates a little bit and we want to consolidate them into a central, central repository. Kind of, again, like I said, uh, that looks a little bit more like the ports tree where they're all kind of in one place. Um, I've been toying for a long time with some kind of integrated container monitoring solution. Um, and again, I don't want Bastille to get really big or bloated or require a bunch of dependencies. That's always been a design decision. But I think we can do basic monitoring in a very simple way that doesn't have to add a lot of bloat. Uh, but you could be notified of services being stopped or, or processes that are not running or things like that. Um, <clears throat> and then lastly, as Bastille continues to mature and the core functionality um, uh, kind of settles and becomes really stable and we're not we're not changing the core kind of like the abi if you will um, i would like to add a bastille api where you can just interact with it through a standard api like through a web you know a web api that kind of a thing um, we don't have any of that built yet but this is something that i've been thinking about and trying to decide the best way to implement um, all of these different things. But I think all of these are pretty exciting um, and definitely uh, robust features and things that would set Bastille apart and make it unique um, from uh, other systems. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> we do have, uh, like I mentioned, I wanted to share some of these links before we wrap up. We do have a dedicated getting started guide it kind of goes through a lot of these things that I've outlined in this presentation, um, but in a little bit more detail and it has a little bit more, um, um, I guess, examples for some of the configs that you might look at and stuff. And then the Bastille blog um, has specific posts on the networking and the VNet and you know how, how, how can I use these different types of networking options. It has uh, posts on the templating and using variables and dynamically generating uh, your containers based on uh, basically variables that you feed to it and can make them unique, even though the template is essentially the same across systems. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, before I wrap this up, let me give you a quick sneak peek of one of the new options that I teased earlier. Um, we have a new option, Bastille list A, which will list all the containers, whether they're started or stopped. It will show what release they're at. It will show if they have any published ports. And by published ports, I mean, have we poked any holes in the firewall so that someone can reach this container directly? Um, if I stop some of these, that will reflect in the list. This one now shows it's down versus the other ones are up. Um, this is a really nice improvement. And this, uh, this is something that um, has been, we've had feedback on this for a long time. The standard list doesn't show the up or down state. It doesn't show the ports. It doesn't show the release. Um, this is just basically the standard JLS command output. Um, but a lot of the feedback has been, I want to be able to more easily see what's up and what's down. I'd like to be able to see at a glance what release these are on and so on. Um, so this Bastille list dash A, uh, this will be available in the upcoming release for Bastille Day, but is not available right now in the package if you've installed it um, just from the package server or from ports. This will be coming soon. 
Um, so this is a, one of the nice new features. Um, we've also done a lot of bug fixes and improvements on um, cloning and import and exporting of containers. Um, <clears throat> we support exporting a container from one machine and importing it on another one. We've tried to improve the efficiency of those and some of the like um, uh, the compression mechanisms and the time that it takes to do those, speed some of that up. Um, uh, we've, again, in the last six months, there's been quite a lot of work. I don't have a uh, full, full breakdown of the change log. Um, but I'm sure you can find that during the release or in the release notes. Um, just, uh, I guess it's just over a month from now. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So with that, that's about the end of my presentation. Here are the links again. If you want to follow us on Twitter and see the announcements or what's going on, you can find the website there. And if you'd like to join us in Discord for just day-to-day -day chat and also for some community support, if you've had any issues, you can drop in and we can try to help you out. If you want to work on templates, we'd love to have you join us in the Discord and tell us what templates you'd like to build. We can help you do that as well. Uh, there is also a bridge between the Discord and the Libera chat for IRC. For those that prefer the IRC, you could join us in our channel there and everything will be uh, a bridge between the Discord and the IRC so everybody can still communicate with with everybody the way they want. So <clears throat> that's all I have for today. I really, I really hope you check out Bastille. Um, I'd love to hear your feedback and see what you think. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I'm just really excited uh, to be working on this. And uh, I'm really thankful that I had the opportunity to come share it today. Thank you, Christopher, for that excellent presentation. It uh, looks like we do have a couple of questions in IRC. Um, one may have already been answered. Um, so I'll drop that here. I think I saw a question about mixing and matching thin jails and thick jails. And yes, you can do that as much as you like. Um, you can at the at the time of creation, you can specify whether this is a thin jail or a thick jail and build as many of both as you want. Um, the thin jails are the defaults. And the thick jails, um, of course, are not, but it just takes one little option to make it that way and or convert it afterwards. Um, was there another question that maybe yeah. I didn't? Yeah. Uh, there's one from Mark J. Uh, is there a way for Bastille templates to specify required DevFS entries? Um, you know, right now, the template system doesn't have any hooks to directly manage the DevFS entries. Um, the DevFS, sorry, DevFS entries uh, would be required if you wanna use VNet. Uh, but beyond that, um, I guess we don't have interaction there, but I would, uh, I'm really curious to see uh, what the use case is. Maybe we can chat more about that. All right, I think I think that may be the last one. Check it on YouTube as well. We have questions and okay. comments in both places today. All right. I think well, I'm back on. I don't know if you okay. if my camera is showing. You're good. You're back. <laughs> okay, great. I did lose internet, and so um, so I'm hot spotting now. I don't know what happened, <laughs> but anyway, but um, but thank you, Christopher, for that talk on Bastille BSD. I've been wanting to hear your talk since I think you were supposed to give a talk at scale uh, back in early well March of 2020, and. Uh -huh. Um, and that's when travel started being restricted and you weren't able to, to travel to give the talk. And so it's, uh, it's really great to, um, yeah, to finally be able to hear your yeah. talk. And I, and I really loved how you, um, you would explain a command to us and then you'd go to your demo and just and ex execute the command so we could see um, basically how it worked and what the results looked like. Yeah. So that was really helpful. And I was going to ask you. Um, I mean, you didn't. You mentioned if people were interested in contributing templates, are there any other ways that folks can 
uh, contribute to the project? Um, I mean, uh, we I'm always happy to see just standard pull requests on the main code itself as well. That's primarily hosted on GitHub slash best deal BSD. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the code improvements um, have been from the community. The community has been absolutely great in this regard. Uh, I, I spoke with someone some time ago and I found myself mentioning that I don't know how to build software not out in the open where everyone can look and everyone can help. I just don't know how to do it, right? So a lot of the features that you've seen here have been committed, have been shared by the community. Um, the template file improvements were done by part of our community. Um, the ZFS support and the cloning and stuff is all done by part of the community. Um, I've coded a lot of this, but I did not code all of this. And I'm very, very happy to look at pull requests and improvements and bugs and you know if you have a way to make it better i'm very happy to look at it with you great well, great well thank you um yeah thank you no so our, our next talk will be uh, two weeks from today that's i believe that's june 18th and it will be how to submit a patch on freebsd by drew Gurkowski and ed mass so um so hopefully we'll see you again uh, next week at the developer summit it looks like a few people registered during this talk, which was exciting and um, and then we'll see you at FreeBSD Fridays two weeks from today, so thank you everyone. Sounds good. <laughs>